So I, <laughs> I had a quite strange first job in television. My, I grew up in Norfolk and where Anglia Television was based. And my friend got a job as an assistant producer on The Trisha Show, which was a chat show. And I'd just finished school and she said, do you want to come and be a runner? So that was my first experience of television, was being a runner on The Trisha Show. I learned quite a lot, but I also learned that I never wanted to work on a chat show. <laughs> I'm just really fascinated by people and figuring them out. It's funny because I think a lot of directors of, that I know at the moment, sort of peers, are really interested in getting into drama. It seems to be the thing at the moment where everyone who's in documentary wants to get into drama, whether you're a director or an editor. And it's not that I wouldn't be interested in that someday, but I think it's, it's really connecting with human beings, trying to see the grey in something that appears very black and white, and sort of helping people tell their stories and sort of understand things about themselves that they might not understand. I suppose I get called up about subjects by people um, wondering if I'm interested in making a film. And honestly, I sort of know within the first line of the description. In gut, there's a gut instinct. It's either that's not for me or yes, yes, I need to make that. And it's quite hard to describe what that is because it could really be about anything. Um, but I suppose I'm, I gravitate towards subjects where I think that people and society think they understand it, and I have a very strong instinct that probably it's much more complicated than they think it is, and that I can help really explain what it is. I'm drawn to quite dark subjects. I mean, my friends and my family hate that. <laughs> they wish that I could find something that was a bit happier, a bit lighter. And I don't know, I think that's just in your psyche, isn't it? I think I had experiences when I was young of, of difficult things happening, and I think I'm drawn to understand difficult emotions that people have and figuring them out. But I've always, I've been driven by my gut instinct a lot in this job. It's quite weird when you first see Louis in real life, because you're so used to seeing him on television. I think I'd sort of seen him around, I'd been making a film at the BBC called Life and Death Row, and I'd seen him sort of wandering around. And then I got a call from, um, a creative director at the BBC, and she said there's a film about anorexia with Louis. And, I mean, it's a sort of double bonus, isn't it? I really felt like I had never seen something that helped me understand that illness. And I knew that it couldn't just be about wanting to be thin. I felt like there was this whole world that people didn't understand, and I wanted to help people understand. And then because Louis is just so great at um, interacting with people and sort of getting to the heart of something, that those two things came together. I think Anorexia would have been a very different and more difficult film without him in it, actually. I mean, there's a lot of work that goes into making a film before sort of Louis enters the room and meets the people, but then he walks in and it's like they've sort of known him for ages. Um, and he just has this ability to ask sort of penetrating questions without upsetting people, which is, I think is a skill you need as a documentary maker. You have to be able to go to those difficult places and ask really challenging questions without um, upsetting your access or upsetting the person you're filming. It was actually a fairly new team, and so he often had worked with a series producer that he'd worked with for ages and an editor, and when we made Anorexia, um, there was a new series producer. Um, I brought in an editor that had never worked on a Louis that I'd worked with quite a lot. And so there was a slightly different dynamic, and I think he sort of enjoyed working with new people, and we brought Simon McMahon, who's the editor, we brought our experience of making observational films to the Louis film, and I think that made the anorexia film what it is really, the combination of all of us. I think it's one of the biggest challenges about being a documentary filmmaker who works on quite difficult dark subjects, to separate your feelings and your emotions and your relationship with that person from the film and to not be pulled in by the darkness. And I think it's a real learning curve. I think early on, I sort of threw myself in um, hook, line and sinker really and sort of absorbed everything that was coming at me and sometimes it is really difficult because you've got people that have experienced death and murder and re are going through very painful things in their life and I think to get the interviews, to get the content there's a, a connection between you and them there's an exchange of sort of energies that happens but then you end up taking on a lot of that, that negative emotion there are two things I've learned one is that you can still get that connection without giving quite so much of yourself and you have to do that, I think, to survive in this industry, really. Um, and the other thing is I always take a sort of significant breaks after making a film that's been quite heavy. 
I need to sort of like recalibrate myself before I go again. I think there are so many different skills you need to be a documentary filmmaker. The sorts of films I make, I think they have um, a very strong emotional connection and empathy to the subjects. And as I said, they try and find something about the subject that people don't know, and that involves getting quite a lot into, inside people's heads. So for me, the key skills are um, you have to be able to connect with people on quite a deep level. I think you have to be able to read people very well. And I think you often, you see things in people they don't even see in themselves. And I think then you know that you can try and get that to come out. So you have to have a lot of empathy, an ability to connect with human beings, an ability to read them. But then you have to be able to take all of that and have a vision for the film and where you're going with it and what you're trying to say. And then I also think creatively, you have to have a vision. What do you want it to look like and feel like? Um, and, how, and know how you're telling the story. And I think all of those things have to come together. So it, th there's, loads of, there's loads of skills I think you need, and I think you learn them at different points in your career. But for me, the key is that connection with people. Making Life and Death Row was really hard. I think I've realized it was hard because I think sometimes when you make films as a filmmaker, you bring your own experiences to something. And I, in that film, it was about a mother who'd lost her son about a year before I filmed her. He'd been murdered, horrifically murdered on her kitchen floor. And she was broken. I mean, actually, I would say, she said afterwards that she thought she was on the verge of a breakdown. I don't think anyone of us knew that at the time. But the grief that came at me, and we were hanging out nearly every day for two months. And I, I have experienced quite a lot of grief myself. And I think sometimes what happens when you're making films is that it taps into something quite personal. So every film's hard, but if what you're filming resonates with an experience you have had, that's when it becomes tricky, I think, as a filmmaker. You have to find a way to try and separate those things out. Every single film gives you a different challenge. Honestly, every film I start, I think this will be the one where I'm gonna fail. This will be the one where I'm gonna be found out. This will be the one that I can't pull off. Um, because every single film, you're, you're learning something that you have never learned before. This is the thing about this job, you never know everything. Every film you make, you're learning something different. All films are really quite painful to make. <laughs> and the, the, most, the hardest ones are often the best ones. They are. If I could sort of give someone younger advice, or my younger self advice, it's you really have to believe you can do it. Somewhere deep inside, you have to believe that you can do it. And even when you're going for jobs and you're getting turned down and it's really, really hard, something, you have to hold on to something deep inside you, even if your confidence is knocked, that I can do this, I can get there, I know I can get there. And I think that's one of the hardest things. This is, it's not an easy journey. I mean, it's taken me quite a long time to get here. There's been knockbacks and it is persevere if you really want it, if you feel you have to make films, you have to keep going. <laughs>